Well, thanks for, for joining this session, folks. Um, we're going to be talking about going code to cloud with the Azure Developer CLI. And we're going to start kind of with like the first section being like a framing of kind of a, a problem I think a lot of us have faced. Um, and then kind of like a, a live code demo, uh, technology permitting. OK. So I want to start by asking you to all recall a time where you were building some kind of an application, really any application. And if you can't think of something, maybe we'll think of a to-do application where you can keep track of daily tasks. You might want to add tasks, add due dates, tick things off when you've completed them. I'm just using this as kind of a canonical example, but really this example will scale to pretty much anything. Um, and so for most folks, uh, this, this part's pretty, pretty trivial, right? You kind of can imagine these three components, your front end, back end, and database when you're, when you're starting with your local prototype. And then, you know, from there, you might need to make some decisions. And these are maybe some, some bigger decisions. Uh, you might have some existing uh, knowledge of libraries and frameworks, have a tech stack that you've used before. Or you might need to do some research to identify options for your app. Um, and after careful consideration, you might, you know, choose take those components that we outlined in that first like ideation or specking phase, and map them to maybe like a React front end, a C sharp back end, and a SQL DB for your database. Uh, or maybe you started building and uh, designing in tandem. I'm not here to mandate any particular development process in, in the proof of concept phase, right? Um, and so now, right, the next step from there is maybe like you've decided on your idea, you have your tech stack, you've started building something. It works great locally. Awesome. Um, the next step, step here might be to get it up and running on Azure. Um, but if you're not well versed in Azure or don't have a ton of expertise in the cloud, this can be actually like a pretty daunting task, right? Um, so the actual question of how do I get this up and running on, on Azure is a really big question that requires you a, a bunch of research, really. Um, and as you research, you might have more questions that pop up, like which cloud services should I even use? Or you know, how, to set up, how do I set up my local dev environment? How do I provision the right infrastructure with the right configurations? How do I know that what I'm doing is, is using security best practices? And with all of those questions, uh, the unfortunate bit is that it's not really straightforward, right? You'll probably end up with a, it depends on X, Y, or Z being the answer to any one of those questions, which makes things even more cumbersome. Um, and, you know, so so we've heard this. I think uh, this is pretty relatable for a lot of folks. It's super relatable uh, for me, and like something that I've really struggled with is like taking my my prototype and actually making it a real thing that I can share with my colleagues or, or peers. I've worked at startups in the past as well, and you know, we didn't have a dedicated DevOps person to go out and like figure all this stuff out for us. Um, so we've talked a lot about these questions, right? But like, let's take a look at some answers. So. If we were to say take that that to do app or you know that basic kind of three component app that we talked about in that ideation phase and actually get it up on Azure, this is one kind of flavor of of option that we could um, we we could use, right? So to get that three th component app up, uh, we'd actually need to provision or create nine different resources on Azure. Um, and so in this case, we need an app service plan to define the set of compute resources needed for the web app to run two Azure App Service instances for our front end and back end of the app, a key vault to store our application secrets because we don't want to be inlining our tokens and passwords. That's a security no-no. Um, Cosmos DB API for SQL for our database, log analytics workspace to store all of our collected logs and data, application insights to provide live app performance management and monitoring, and a portal dashboard. Um, but not only that, We'd also need to figure out how to set up roles and permissions, how to configure the services, how to, to get set up to be productive when we're locally developing, build out charts, you know, set up our CI CD pipeline. Um, and so taking that app from our, our local prototype to Azure um, and all of those things, it's really, uh, it really becomes a lot to think about and manage, right? And so what turned out that a very basic example actually turned out to be quite complicated when we added Azure or the cloud to the equation. And all in all, answering all of these cloud-specific questions, you know, provision the infrastructure, deploying your code on Azure is a lot to think about. Um, and if you're an app developer and you're not that token DevOps person, uh, the Azure piece of like actually deploying your code is a hindrance in your like productivity and velocity, right? Because it's kind of like this hurdle on a path from A to B, where A is some problem that your business has. And then B is, you know, uh, serving that, that those customers are actually having that solution in place. Um, and so this is kind of the, the framing and, and um, a place where I want to introduce you all to the Azure Developer CLI, which can really help us kind of in that end-to-end -end journey from GitHub to local development to the cloud. Um, and so if you're unfamiliar with the Azure Developer CLI or AZD, uh, it is a, a generally available CLI tool. It came out 
It previewed at Build last year, it GA'd this year at Build, um, but it's a higher level application developer friendly command line tool. So I think a lot of folks are familiar with a more imperative paradigm where you're passing in a bunch of flags and parameters and maybe it gets kind of gnarly to like actually manage all of those and remember all of them and share them with your team. AZD takes a higher level approach. So instead we have commands like provision and deploy and up and down and see, uh, pipeline config. Um, and we want to keep things simple and easy to remember. That's kind of the name of the game here. And, and so uh, I just told you like it's super simple and I just told you how hard Azure was and now suddenly there's a CLI that's super easy to use, right? Where did that complexity go? Um, well, it's still there, but we've actually chosen a more declarative route for, for the CLI in that in, uh, when we talk about the CLI, we talk about it in terms of kind of an ecosystem. So there's AZD, like the core binary you run your commands with, but there's also this template ecosystem, which it kind of is kind of that more declarative flavor. So a, a, a template is really these like extensible, customizable cloud blueprints. So the idea is that you find um, a template that maps to your local application stack. Uh, on GitHub, we have the AZD templates topic. There's like I think almost 100 templates there of various flavors of application, everything from Kubernetes microservices, your general web applications like our to-do app we talked about just a second ago. Um, or you can look at um, this website, which is our, our awesome AZD website, which is a curated template gallery. Um, it includes both Microsoft authored and community authored templates that we peer review and we make sure they're using best practices and all that good stuff. But the idea is that you find this template. These templates include reusable infrastructure as code assets, that are either written in BICEP or in Terraform. Um, and then you basically leverage those, swap out the proof of concept application code that's included there to help you kind of like identify this is the right flavor of template for your app. And then you kind of like hit the ground running. Um, and so instead of all that cloud complexity at the top of your workflow, well now you have a, a pretty solid start for day zero and then you can kind of iterate and like address cloud problems as they arise or as your business needs change. Um, and these templates aren't just like a hello world scenario. They include everything like uh, editor configurations, CI, CD pipeline definitions. Uh, if you work in dev containers, we've got co configurations for that as well because we, we kind of want to support you in that end-to-end -end journey, not just in the provisioning and deployment phase, but also when you're just developing against cloud resources. Um, cool. So I just talked at you for a little bit, but this is kind of where we're going to get to a, a demo of, of sorts. So I'm actually, uh, I'm in VS Code connected to a code space because that's where I prefer to hang out uh, when I write code. I also have the new C-sharp dev kit installed, which is uh, something you can get if you have a Visual Studio subscription. It came out, I think, at the beginning of June. But we're going to be looking at this React web app C-sharp API SQL DB on Azure template. That's kind of like very similar to what we saw earlier with that to-do template. Um, so in here, we have uh, like a readme that includes kind of that like framing for helping you sort of identify that this template is something that you might want to use. So it's, to, it's a to-do app, but really you don't have to care about the to-do part. The idea is that like you might be building something with a similar tech stack as this um, to get started. And we kind of go through kind of the prereqs. So in this case, it's a .NET SDK 6.0 and then a Node.js for our front end. And then there's like a quick start to tell you how to get started with AZD. Um, and then we have the, the, the architecture diagram to sort of orient you, um, and then some like add-ons after the provisioning and deployment that you can kind of opt into or, or kind of take it to the next level. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, kick things off uh, to get rolling, because this does take a couple minutes. Um, so if I type azd-h, we can see our help text. You can see all those really simple and easy commands. Uh, we're going to be using our most magical command. And I say magical because we actually strive to be extremely non-magical and really think of AZD as like your, your orchestrator or like your, your, your partner in understanding and making sense of Azure. Um, and so I say that it's magical only because it's a convenience gesture that combines three AZD commands into a single AZD command. So instead of running AZD, um, package, AZD provision, AZD deploy, we're just going to run AZD up and it's going to handle all that for me um, and I can go walk away uh, and grab a coffee or, or do what I need to do. So I'm going um, to type AZD up and I have already run this ahead of this session because I wanted to make sure that we got through everything. So if this was my first time running AZD up, I would be required to pass in uh, subscription uh, after we would authenticate and then uh, location uh, as well as a uh, an environment name um, and that could feasibly be something like dev test or prod 
Um, we kind of support that multi-environment scenario. I'm not going to be demoing that here because we have, I don't know, like 10 minutes left, but we do kind of support that. Um, and so right now, AZD is just finished packaging up our app, zipping up our API um, and our front end um, using kind of uh, the, 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 the tool chains for those particular uh, languages. Um, but let's talk a little bit while this is running about what a template really is. Like what makes an AZD template or an AZD compatible code base an AZD compatible code base? So really the, the main requirements here are an Azure.yaml. And this is, this is like a purely AZD convention. But in here, this is sort of like the metadata. And I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller because I'm super zoomed in. Um, but this is really the metadata that tells AZD what we're doing, where our code lives, and what we're going to what we're going to do with it on Azure. Um, and so in this case, we have uh, two services. We've got our front end and our back end, our web and API. Um, we have paths to point AZD to where our project code lives in our app. Um, we've got um, our artifacts directory. Uh, language, JavaScript front end, C sharp back end, and both of these are going to be hosted on App Service. And so we don't mandate any particular like project structure. So feasibly, if you can pass in whatever path uh, to, to the, in the Azure YAML, you're good to go. Um, in this case, we have that the SRC directory with API and web subdirectories, um, but you can do whatever you'd like. Um, and so the idea here, right, is that you would possibly delete this folder or delete the API and the web and swap in your own source code. So that's kind of like requirement one. Um, requirement two is an infra directory. This hosts our infrastructure as code assets. And if you're unfamiliar with infrastructure as code, it's a nice programmatic way that we can define our Azure resources. We can check it into source control. We can comment it. We can share it with our teammates. It's great. Um, and in here, in our main.bicep, and bicep is the, the kind of Azure flavor of, it's a domain specific language for provisioning Azure resources. We also support Terraform as well. Um, and so here we're going to see like all of the resources that are going to be created that exactly the all the resources that were mentioned in that architecture diagram. So in here we've got like our resource group, we've got our app insights instance for front end, our back end, we've got um, key vault, we've got our Cosmos DB for SQL. Um, we've also got monitoring infrastructure and we have this optional feature which we're not going to enable for, we didn't enable today, but you can optionally enable APIM if you want to mediate your request between your front end and back end. All of that lives uh, in our infra directory, and our team has authored kind of these bicep modules that you can go and you can click down into each one of these, tweak all of the configurations, really make it your own. But on day zero or day one, you might not really care about that. You might just want to try it out and then see kind of where you where you go. And so we've tried to pick smart defaults that are kind of usually def like usually end up in the free or basic tiers to get started. But you're you're more than welcome to kind of navigate through the modules and, and tweak the configurations as needed. That's kind of our second requirement. And our final requirement is actually a directory that the Azure Developer CLI generates for us. So we have a .azure directory, um, which hosts, uh, this is the name of my environment that I, I created, and all of our environment um, variables. These are all outputs from our BICEP file and our infrastructure as code. So in here, we've got our environment name, uh, you know, we've got region, we've got our endpoints for our front end and back end, because as I said, I've already deployed this before. Um, but this is really crucial to how AZD knows how to like orchestrate and wire everything up for us. So those are really like the main requirements for, for us to be able to actually successfully deploy. Um, but again, you don't have to think about the infrastructure necessarily. The first time you go to run AZD up, it's sort of just like a great starting point for you. Um, I also mentioned that we had um, configurations for CIC pipeline definitions. And this is maybe like one of my favorite things about AZD is that I'm running AZD up locally today, but I also have it set up in CI. So now when I push new code to my repo, AZD will go and run provision and deploy for me on every commit. Uh, you could set up on, on tag or whatever you want in your CI CD pipeline run. Um, but now like I don't even have to really think about my deployments, which is really nice. So I just install all of my um, app dependencies. I install AZD through our, our GitHub action. And then I authenticate with federated credentials, which is OIDC, OpenID Connect, which is a security best practice, and then run provision and deploy. Um, so I don't even have to think about running AZD day to day. Um, we also have editor configurations as well. So this is taking uh, a couple minutes, and it's taking a couple minutes because we're not just hosting your app somewhere, right? We are actually setting up all the right uh, resources, wiring them up, like actually creating the roles, permissions, all that good stuff, so you're set up for success kind of starting from, from the get-go. Um, but as this is, uh, we just finished our provisioning. So if I um, expand this out a little bit, 
We have all of our resources created for us, unique identifiers that we can take a look at in the Azure portal if we wanted to and monitor that deployment. And now we're running AZD deploy, so we're actually taking those zips, uh, zip files and zip deploying them onto app service right now. Um, so when this is done, it would look like this. Uh, we're almost there, but I ran this earlier and took about six minutes and 53 seconds to, to deploy the app on Azure. Um, and if I go and I click these, I can, um, we had an open API.yaml um, in here, or swagger.yaml, so we can explore our endpoints. And then we also have that fully fledged to-do app running on, um, running on Azure infrastructure wired up to our Cosmos DB database. So I can go and add another task, um, all that good stuff. Okay, it just took a second. Okay, um, we're almost at time, but there's kind of two more things I wanted to show really quickly. So the next one is just this AZD monitor command. Um, this will bring me directly to my portal dashboard. Um, it's gonna make me authenticate. Please don't make me type my password. Great, it didn't. Um, <laughs> um, this is nice because when we ran AZD provision before, we actually created these dashboards. Um, based on our infrastructure as code. And so now we have that usage reliability responsiveness metric set up for us that was included as part of the template, as well as a very quick gesture to get exactly where you need to be in the Azure portal. And I don't know if anyone's ever navigated to this view manually, but there's like quite a number of clicks. So I like this one because I think it's a, a time saver. Um, and then finally, the last thing I wanted to show was just um, AZD pipeline config. So I'm not actually gonna run this uh, because I ran it earlier and we're also running out of time. Um, or I guess I could run it, but basically this is gonna, what I love about this command, this is probably my favorite command, is that um, I can set up a CI CD pipeline run, I, AZD will set up um, the service principal or update it, it will set all of my repo variables so that when I'm in CI, it references the right environment, location, and subscription, and I don't have to do any of that, um, which I don't know if you've already set up that, but that's also like a, a huge <laughs> time sink. Um, and I'm also in, um, I'm also uh, using this VS Code, or the GitHub Actions extension for VS Code, um, which means that I can monitor my CI CD pipeline run from within the editor as well. Um, so AZ now will set up, has this set up, so now every time I go and I push new code to the repo, it'll run AZD uh, provision and deploy. Um, and there was one more thing I wanted to say about that. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think for me, this is like probably one of my favorite features because it kind of gives, gives me that peace of mind of like, I don't have to actually worry about deploying or doing things the right way. Um, so yeah, so that kind of brings us to the end of this session. I'm gonna switch back over to the slide um, deck. And this is kind of the workflow that we just went over really quickly in this 20 minute block. But basically we started out with a template in a real world scenario, we probably rip out that source code, pop in our own app code, and then run AZD up like we showed before, which will package, provision, and deploy our app on Azure. Um, and then we kind of briefly talked about kind of infusing those best practices into our workflow. So it's not like enough for us to have just provisioned and deployed our app on Azure. We also want to be making sure that we're able to monitor our app and also run it in CI because that's how we do secure and uh, re repeatable deployments. Um, and so with that, I'm actually going to leave this slide up for a bit if folks uh, want to take a picture. This is like all, all the resources for AZD you probably ever need. Um, the demo app that I showed is that first link. We have links to install our, our official documentation page. We're also completely open source. So if you're interested in um, AZD binary or any of our VS, uh, Visual Studio or VS Code extensions, all of that development happens in the open uh, on that Azure dev repo. And then we host community standups once a month following our monthly release. We actually just had our community standup yesterday. Um, they're live streamed on YouTube and on Twitch. And so if you're interested in AZD or what's coming or you want to talk to the team, we have PM and engineering folks that hang out there and answer questions and give demos, uh, which is pretty fun. Um, and then finally, that template gallery, uh, we've got flavors of, of blueprints for getting on Azure for basically every type of application. And if you don't see it, um, you're welcome to contribute your own template to the gallery as well, and our, our team will work with you to kind of review it um, and get it get it up there. So, so yeah, with that, um, thanks for joining this talk, and I'm really excited to hear what you think uh, and what, what you build with AZD.